this mark is pulled up and the south side is pulled up as well. JP Morgan called the mark in the dark. Welcome, traders. Apologies for the slight delay there, a bit of a uh, technical glitch on, uh, on my end. Um, if you can hear me and you can see the welcome screen, if you could type a Y in the chat box, that would uh, be helpful. Okay. So before we get into today's content, let's, uh, as always, remind ourselves of uh, the inherent risks there are in trading any financial instrument can uh, lose more capital than you necessarily have on deposit. And secondly, and most importantly to today's discussion, um, the views expressed by me here today are solely mine and they are not indicative of Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. Uh, brief introduction to myself. Uh, for those who are here for the first time, after uh, I graduated, I joined a city PLC consulting firm. After a couple of years learning the ropes, I left with some colleagues and went on to co-found and successfully exit a consulting startup post the merger uh, late 2004. And then moved on to explore my passion for markets, some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I uh, started day trading or more appropriately day gambling the S&P 500. After some early beginner's luck, I racked up some solid gains. However, as is often the case, um, my beginner's luck ran out. And as the market phase changed, I began to average down into losing positions, giving back all my gains and ultimately experiencing a significant six-figure hit to my personal capital. Uh, to say this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. I had to stand back and really figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the markets. So I decided to get serious about trading and sort out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for 18 months, it was a period during which I upped not just my technical game, researching and developing a strategy that suited my personality. I extensively back and forward tested and developed a rigorous risk management approach to underpin this strategy. But more importantly, um, during this period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably the most important watershed shift, so to speak, was moving from being a highly goal-orientated and uh, focused on financial gains to becoming really purely process-orientated. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and have a professional trading mindset and understand the true nature of trading uh, being a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment and attachment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcome of individual trades. I'm no longer concerned about the outcome of individual trades or even a bunch of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades because I know if I focus on excellence in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, information uh, of which you can see on the screen at the moment with respect to performance. Um, I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Uh, since 2010, I've also personally mentored over 100 private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to uh, former CME floor traders in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent profits from the markets, um, it, helping people really to develop not just the technical game, obviously, but really focusing again on, um, on mindset. I've consulted to numerous brokers and trading education brands, contributing written content, webinars and live presentation content on a range of topics from market analysis to trading strategy development and execution. In addition to my fund management responsibilities and private mentoring, I'm also a resident market expert at Ticknell, providing uh, market and trade analysis on a daily basis. You can register through there, the Ticknell blog site to receive um, 
updates on uh, on my daily outlook for the markets and uh, specific setups that I'm watching in the markets. Uh, my other passion project is as head of trading and trader education for a leading trader education brand called fxcareerswap.com, offering development and funding to retail trading talents. At FX Career Swap, we don't just develop retail traders' market and trading strategy knowledge. We work on mindset development through a structured program that culminates in managing the firm's capital at zero personal financial risk on a profit share basis. And for those that are interested, there's some contact information there on the screen. You can either give the guys in London a call or drop them an email if you're interested in finding out more about that opportunity. Um, so that gives you a flavor of where I'm coming from. So let's jump into some, uh, some ideas that I'm focused on at the moment with respect to the markets. Um, firstly, I put a post up this morning on, um, on LinkedIn with respect to the dollar Chinese yuan um, increasingly becoming an important gauge and instrument with respect to risk metrics. And, um, and I posted this in the, not just in LinkedIn, but also in my trading team chat uh, through FX Career Swap. Uh, about this uh, big, uh, big trade, big options trade that was put on overnight, um, and essentially what it implies is that we should see upside in the dollar yuan over, uh, over the next twelve months. Large customer order, which has meant that the market makers and dealers are now trying to cover exposure or potential exposure in the mid sevens. In a minute, we'll look at the Chinese wine and we'll see where we're trading. Actually, we'll, we'll jump into that one quickly now. So we've got the, wine, the Chinese wine at the moment um, in this downtrend channel that we've been watching with a potential uh, fifth wave completing here. Um, we've got some nice momentum divergence and uh, we're looking to put in a bullish reversal pattern here. Uh, so we currently trade uh, 662. And, um, and that options action that, uh, that I've just referenced would actually have us up trading above seven. So you can see a meaningful corrective move in terms of the dollar one. If we look at the last correction that we saw here and we overlay that versus the current low. So, I mean, even, even just replicating this corrective phase that we saw um, back in the beginning of the year, that would only put us up at 689. And, um, and according to this options uh, move, we're looking at, uh, at 750. So come back to the chart here and uh, you can see that 750 would actually have us making new highs. Uh, so new strength there um, above, uh, above prior highs. So we've, this is a, uh, a chunky move in terms of the dollar dollar yuan. So that's something to keep in, keep in mind. Now, obviously, you know, that, that's, uh, that options action is, you know, can be over the next 12 months. So, I mean, it's not necessarily going to define the immediate price action, but certainly it's something to keep in mind as, uh, as price, price action develops. And I, keep, and I reference that because we've also got, or we had um, a few weeks ago now, uh, a big a, uh, six month uh, put in the Euro. Uh, so that's someone who's gonna get paid on the Euro over the next six months if we trade below 115.50. And um, if you look at the price action of the dollar yuan and the, the euro, they trade inversely. So what, 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 that, what, the, what the market or some, or some significant players in the market are betting on is that we are likely to move into at least a, a potential six month period of, um, of strength in the dollar, in the, or strength in the dollar um, reflected its through the, the, uh, the yuan and um, weakness in the yuan and weakness in the euro. Now, bear in mind, rapidly they're becoming the biggest counterparts to the, to the US. Um, that's certainly something that we wanna be cognizant of as, as traders. Um, in terms of positioning in general, the credit agricole uh, positioning information that I share still suggests we're, we're stretched on the upside in terms of the euro, uh, dollar, Picking up a bit of interest now in the dollar or starting to see a bit of interest in the dollar and um, and we'd anticipate that to be reflected in price action you can see we're still pretty stretched in terms of the kiwi dollar similar story with the swissy um, but really the standout is obviously the euro at two standard deviations above the mean and so um, we can expect the potential like i've uh, like i've talked about 
for a um, for a euro pullback, and then that coincides with um, this uh, fractal that I shared with respect to uh, the DXY and a period where we see a contested or not necessarily not necessarily a contested but not a smooth handover or transition in terms of power uh, with the US and um, and obviously we have Trump who at this stage is not prepared to recognise uh, Joe Biden's victory. Uh, Joe Biden has set up. Uh, obviously, he's made the made the numbers in terms of the Electoral College, and he's now proceeding uh, in some form of transition and is, uh, is, is at this point um, referred to as president elect. So this coincides with the idea that the dollar pulled potential weakness in the dollar uh, into or around that contested election before um, before we see a pick up to the upside. And so if we move to the charts now, and let's start with the dollar index. This is the broad dollar index versus um, six other currency pairs. You can see we've, managed, we've held again this, um, this range support down at the 92.60, and we're attempting to, uh, to put in some type of bullish reversal here today. We have range resistance up here at 94.75. Um, you'll remember from... Uh, Previous weeks, I'm looking for. I was looking for a fifth wave to complete here, but I did reference this area as potentially being sticky, and it looks like it is going to be a gain. Now, whilst we hold below this monthly pivot at 93.50, then there is still potential for this fifth wave to complete. But note again, we are trading outside at the moment, anyway, outside of this uh, this trend line resistance, which has defined the trend channel um, all the way down. And, um, and we are seeing some pretty decent momentum divergence here. So is the dollar, uh, could, could we see a, a retest of range resistance in the dollar? If we move into the equal weighted dollar index, we can see it a little more clearly here. Um, we, uh, we've got a bullish reversal on Monday, consolidated yesterday, and now looking to try and put in a bullish outside candle versus yesterday's price action. Uh, to get uh, constructive on this, we'd really take out this uh, 119.90 area. And then again, we look for range resistance to get tested uh, back up to 120.95. Uh, We've also got the um, monthly pivot 120.55 there. So we could continue to trade in a range environment, especially um, until we get some type of definitive resolution with respect to the, the US presidency, anticipate that at the latest, I think it's the 6th of December, 6th or the 11th, that um, the US Electoral College have to confirm or certify their votes. And so that would give us a, a conclusion then. What it's also important to remember is that on the 10th of December, we have the ECB meeting. Now the uh, ECB are anticipated at that meeting to, um, to extend uh, monetary policy and their, their dovishness. And if that, that comes into play, then we could anticipate uh, some, some dollar strength um, through that period. So it's, um, whilst the dollar is still under pressure, the fact that we're holding this range support um, could, it does lead me to think that we could see a squeeze before we actually do get that move lower in the dollar index. In terms of uh, the Swissy, I'm running a long position in the Swissy at the moment uh, versus the break of this candle. We've got this potential double bottom here. But so again, always when we're looking at these double bottoms or triple bottoms, what we want to make sure we've got in play is decent um, divergence. And as you can see here, we, uh, we certainly have that in, in spades there. And so long the, the Swissy at the moment, what I'm looking for here is a, basically a test of this descending trend line resistance at the 93.32. We'll have to see how that, uh, how that plays out. Um, in terms of the dollar yen, I'm also long the dollar yen, this big bullish reversal pattern. And again, we've got, uh, we do, not as the divergence in terms of the dollar yen isn't as strong here, but certainly in terms of this corrective phase, we made a new low and we didn't make a new low in terms of the psych indicator. We've got this big bullish outside reversal candle, consolidated um, a bullish inside day yesterday. And we're, I'm looking for this to break out, certainly see a test of uh, the internal descending trend line resistance up to 106.50 uh, at the moment. If we can get through there, then we have 
the uh, external trend line resistance coming in at 107.60. So we'll see how that one plays out. Um, one of the factors I would alert you to if you're, if you're looking at the dollar yen is this is the US Treasury yield. This is a, um, this is inverse to bonds. And so the, the bonds trade in price and, and then the, the yield. So if, if the price of a bond is going up, the yield is going down. If the price of a bond, is, uh, sorry, if the price of a bond is going down then the yield is going up. And that's what we're currently seeing at the moment. And, um, and we're sitting at a pretty significant inflection point with respect to, uh, with respect to these, the yield here. What we're looking to try and do is take out the, the 90, uh, 0.98 and head towards 1%. If we can get through 1%, then we have an equality objective um, up as high as 1.4%. Now, what's going to drive that is obviously this idea that we've potentially got a vaccine in play. And if we have, then that, that then leads into the idea that the economy is going to be reopened, both in the uh, in the US and around the world. And if that's the case, what we're likely to see is uh, a less dovish Federal Reserve. So what the market's saying here is that if we are going to see an improvement in terms of uh, vaccine hopes, then this easy monetary policy scenario that we've been in for, uh, for most of this year uh, could be coming to an abrupt end, and that would be what would drive this, this yield higher. Now, the reason I reference that is because the dollar yen um, obviously trades with that in terms of if we if we are seeing a pickup in yields in the US, then the counterpart in terms of the, the Japanese yen, uh, the Japanese central bank are, have the lowest uh, lowest rate position in the world. So what you're looking at is playing off the, the strength of the dollar or the potential strength of the dollar versus weakness in the yen driven by an improvement in risk sentiment and also this idea of the yield differential. So um, it's, it's certainly what you want to keep an eye on the US 10 year. If we can break 1%, then I think that's what could drive, uh, could drive some higher prices here in the dollar yen. In the loony, uh, again, looking for a potential double bottom here in the loony, uh, or triple bottom even, if you look back to this price action over here, let's draw this in. <laughs> So we have this support area here that we've tested, a pretty nice reversal candle. Um, today would uh, would flip this chart bullish as per my strategy with respect to the, the five period VWAP. And again, you can see that uh, as we traded new lows in price here, we've made higher lows in terms of the momentum study, giving us that divergence support. So when you're looking to play counter trend, if you're going to take counter trend positions, what you really want to see is, um, is divergence in momentum studies to, um, to support that. So again, if we can, uh, if we get a green close here, the scope I think for the loonies certainly trade up to that 132.80 area. See where we are with the Euro. So obviously with the dollar catching a bit of a bid at the moment, the Euro uh, looking weaker. We've held, if we, if we hold this 119.20 again, then the, the, the path um, to me would appear that we, are, we trade back down into the support at 116. And from there, we may then get uh, may then get another uh, round of buying, taking us up into uh, into highs here. And I anticipate those highs would come in advance of the ECB meeting, which, as I've said, is on the 10th of December. So we'll have to see again. It's it's really a heavy range rotation at the moment, um, tricky trading as such. But there are certainly keep an eye on the um, on the edges here. So it's 119 on the top side and 116 on the downside of the areas to really pay attention to the price action as those are going to offer the best risk reward scenarios in terms of getting into positions. Um, EuroCAD, I've been taking a look at this. Uh, I, what I was looking for with this EuroCAD is a, an equality objective versus this swing here and matching that to the downside at 152. But um, what, we've keep, what we keep running into is this internal equality objective here at 153.24, and they just can't seem to crack that. So I've, uh, I've cut my position in the EuroCAD, but um, we'll see how that, how that plays out, and if there's another opportunity to do something with that. But for now, the support is really coming in around this 153.20 area. Euro sterling is sitting right at its uh, trend channel support now. And uh, we've got this uh, structure support area here, 88.69. Uh, 
Um, there's the potential, I think, from here that we could trade back up into a big head and shoulders scenario. Obviously, Euro sterling and the, the sterling has been heavily, uh, heavily dictated by price action um, with respect to source comments or comments on the wires with respect to the EU-UK trade deal, which they've missed yet another deadline, but they're anticipating hopefully that they'll get something next week. And, um, and that, could, uh, that could see potentially a resolution to that matter. And then we could get some much cleaner price action in terms of a lot of these sterling pairs. But that said, sterling is sitting at the resistance area that I'd highlighted. So we had this ABCD correction into the 78.6% retracement, again, just shy of completing that. Um, but we're holding, and we've also got this trend line resistance. I've got a, I've started a short position here. I think if we, um, if we hold this area as resistance, then certainly in advance of a, a trade deal coming out, we could see another rotation lower. I'm not expecting anything meaningful on the downside, but from a tactical perspective, it offers a decent trading opportunity. Um, certainly we could get back down into these prior highs at the 130 area um, before, if we do get the deal next week, then you know things could, uh, we could see an, another leg higher. But as I've said previously, I think increasingly what you're finding in the market now is that the market is of the view that there is less upside to be had on a deal than there is downside to be had on a no deal. And so this is why you're seeing participants reluctant to really chase, uh, chase the pound much higher than this, uh, this 133 area. Um, Sterling Yen is in a similar position. It's come into uh, its corrected phase. So let me just draw this in so you can follow along. So what we have here is A, B, and C, D. So we, we extended just above the equality objective, but ran straight into the tick at 78.6% retracement. So again, from here, we could see another pullback in terms of uh, sterling yen, at least into that uh, 137. Uh, 80 area before uh, we see if they're prepared to take that higher. Um, sterling CAD, I was watching this trend line Okay, we, we can't, uh, we don't seem to be able to break it at the moment. And if we hold there, then we could be uh, playing this, this trend channel here. So we could get another run to the downside and tre uh, test trend line support. But at the moment, uh, no man's land, we have to see a, a bearish close there. Um, Sterling Aussie is one that I'm watching. I'm in this trade at the moment. I'm looking for this inverse head and shoulder scenario to, uh, to potentially play out here and, um, and take the Sterling Aussie higher. If it, if it does play out, and you know, it's, a, it's still an if at the moment, then in terms of targets, there would be an equality objective versus this swing here, replicate over here, up into the 189.76. And then if we also look at what that does in terms of retracements, so that would take us just shy of a 50% retracement. So this will be the target zone if we can break out. Now, technically, the, um, the inverse head and shoulder scenario would have a target versus the neckline. So um, the actual target, technically the target would be up as high as 194. Um, but again, with prices being beholden at this stage really to, uh, to news on the uh, trade negotiations, it's tricky, tricky trade at the moment. So if you are going to, uh, to get involved, you wanna keep your, your risks relatively tight. But if we can take out the uh, monthly pivot here, 182.62, then certainly we could get up into this 185 area. And if we got through there, then we know where the upside objectives are. Inversely, we've got the Aussie um, consolidating just below it, 78.6% retracement of this last, uh, last leg to the downside. If we can get through there, I'd be looking for this Aussie to test up into the 75, uh, 75.20 or even as high as the 76.89 before Looking at, uh, looking at some short positions in the Aussie. The Aussie CAD is one that I'm watching. Again, we're trading at this trend line resistance. It looked a little bit more bearish earlier on today, but uh, it's looking a bit more bullish. I would need to close below uh, this 94.60 area to, to look at doing something potentially on the short side. We've held this equality objective. We're trading just above it at the moment. See where we close tonight. Um, the Aussie Kiwi is a trade I did have on. Which was, uh, which was looking good, but um, I, got, uh, I got touched out just at break even last night before it rolled over. 
you know, win some, you lose some. Um, but I'm looking now for it to test this uh, potential neckline support. So 105.60, I'm going to really pay attention to how price responds here. Because if we get a bullish uh, bullish reversal and we, we, we stall out at this uh, 105.60, then I see scope for us to actually um, correct higher here and uh, get a move back up into the underside of that trend line. And then we'd have a potential head and shoulders scenario um, developing in the Aussie Kiwi. So you know, that's one that I'm keeping an eye on. So watching this 105.60 area, if we get down here and we do find buyers emerging, then, um, then certainly I would look at, uh, at playing that on the long side from there, uh, targeting the, head and the uh, potential right shoulder here up, uh, up into the 108.50s. Kiwi, another one I'm watching very closely now. We've got this trend line resistance, sending trend line that's capped on the way up. We've got the 161 extension of this uh, correct, last corrective phase. So watching for a move into 6950s and really paying attention to how price responds there, uh, potentially looking at the four hour charts as well uh, for entry if we stall out in this area. Uh, I think we've got scope then to, um, to certainly be down retesting the trend channel support in the 66 area. So some decent risk reward opportunity in the queue. We can get up into this zone and uh, we should have some uh, divergence in play as well there. Keep an eye on, on that area. So uh, it's setting up, setting up nicely at the moment. We'll just have to see if, we, uh, if it can complete the pattern. Kiwi CAD, potential for a double top here in the Kiwi CAD. Again, watching the, uh, the divergence that we've got in play here versus that prior high. Uh, nothing to do immediately. Uh, the S&P, I'll look at, I'll show you another chart of that in a minute. Gold, <clears throat> looking for gold to break lower here um, versus this, uh, this big outside reversal candle. Consolidating bearish consolidation yesterday and today. So looking for a move through the base here at the 80, uh, 1845. Um, imagine it'll get a bit sticky towards um, 1800, but ultimately I'm looking for a test of uh, 1750 in terms of gold there. And uh, we'll see if that develops. Uh, Bitcoin, talked about this uh, for a few weeks now. Uh, trade's still running. I think we can get up into this, uh, this 17,000 area and then maybe we see a more pronounced correction to take us back to, to 14,000. But again, um, you know, the, uh, the momentum appears to be on the upside at the moment. So um, I'm looking for to, to play corrections to, to add to, to long positions. This was our original setup back down here when we got the break on the day that I referenced uh, the Bitcoin. Um, we had Square, the payment solutions company come out saying they're opening up to Bitcoin. They put in 50 million and now we have PayPal similar type of situation. So this is keeping keeping Bitcoin well supported. So uh, last chart for the day is the S&P, keeping a very close eye on this. Um, this is the target zone that I've been waiting for, this 37.28. It looks like we could uh, we consolidate a little bit more here. Watch the divergence. We've potentially got triple divergence developing. And so any push into this area, watch for the bearish reversal patterns as an opportunity on the short side. And I think we could see uh, certainly a correction into projected ascending trend line support um, back down into the 3,400 um, and even to the uh, projected ascending tr uh, trend line versus the prior two lows here, which could have us back down at 3,250. Um, we'll have to see how that plays out, but watch certainly a retest of the highs this pin bar that we had form we broke to new highs we closed back towards the lows on the day so any any more failure above 36.75 up as high as 37.30 i think is going to be an opportunity on the on the short side with respect to the s p so those are the charts that i'm watching the trades that i'm running and uh, and opportunities that i'm looking to uh, to take advantage of in, uh, in the coming sessions. Are there any questions? If you have a chart you want me to take a look at, I haven't covered, type it into the chat box. If there aren't any questions, or if you don't have a question, an N in the chat box is equally as helpful uh, so that I know we're all on the, all on the same page and, uh, and you've understood everything I've been talking about. 
Okay, good stuff. Well, if there aren't any questions, I will uh, wrap this session up here. And um, next week, we'll reconvene at the usual time on Thursday at 1pm. Thanks very much. And I hope you, uh, hope you found this useful.